more music, more music, more music. And to me, uh, the single that came off that I can see for miles was just, uh, I think it preceded the album, but um, to me this was the apotheosis of The Who. It was a kind of culmination of The Who's impact on the swinging 60s. After that, the going got very erratic. I know you can see me, now here's a surprise. I know that you have, cause there's magic in my eyes. After all these singles which deal with identity, anger, frustration, it's like they've emerged out of it all. And um, they're so powerful now they can see for miles. It's got fantastic riffs and guitars exploding all over the place. Um, it's a fantastic record. And it's such a fantastic record that it nearly caused Townsend to, uh, to quit music. Because that record, I, it only reached the top 20. I don't think it went top 10. And that killed Townsend because he knew, and I think anybody with an ear knows that that was the pinnacle of this period that we've been talking about. Although I Can See For Miles can be seen as the final great release prior to Tommy, there were, however, to be two further singles before the end of the decade. The First Dogs, in 1968, became the Who's first serious flop since I'm the Face, and also marked the lowest point in the band's finances. However, it was to be the single Magic Bus that finally drew the era to a close. Magic Bus was probably one of the most heavily promoted of the Who singles. I still have my Magic Bus, which they gave to all journalists, which was like a little dinky toy, a little uh, metal toy, which I, I actually prefer to the single. <laughs> it has to be said. I never was a great fan of Magic Bus. I know it was a great show number. It was a good, um, simple tune to play on gigs. Magic Bus is, is a much more jammed performance, loose-feeling song than a lot of the the stuff that the, the band had released earlier on as singles, which were fantastic nuggets of, of two, two and a half minute kind of power pop that Townsend was so good at. But Magic Bus is nevertheless kind of an interesting um, return to, to their roots in, in some ways, as much as it's kind of back to some blues and R&B kind of roots for them. As the 1960s came to a close, pop music began to change. The release of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band in 1967 had shifted musical emphasis onto the album. The result was to be the end of the singles bands. It was the release of Tommy in May 1969 that would see The Who's final departure from their status in the singles world. And suddenly the album became, became really, really important. And I think after the failure of I Can See for Miles Townsend turned his attention to albums and to concept albums and to rock operas. And I think there was a deliberate policy with Tommy to say, OK, we come to the end of the era. Dogs and Magic Bus finished off the era. There was a certain sense with dogs of frustration and boredom with the singles market. There's a certain sense of frustration on Magic Bus with the singles market. It was almost as if we're trying to get away from this. We're knocking these out. This is the end of an era. Enjoy it for what it is. You ain't going to hear anything like this again from The Who. And then they made the conscious decision, right, that's it, end of the story. We're not going any further with our popism, we're not going any further with our singles, we're going to become a band to make albums. And uh, it cured all his problems. It, uh, it broke the Who in America, it made them financially solvent, um, but above all, it ended, it ended an amazing era, an amazing run of singles, um, unparalleled, I think, in popular music in the 60s. Um, a unique you know, a unique body of work when placed together, musically powerful, lyrically inventive, you know, fantastic records. Throughout the 1970s and 1980s, The Who would go on to have phenomenal success both at home and abroad, but it was in the 1960s among their singles that they truly revolutionised modern music. They were makers of extraordinary singles, 
regardless of the content of albums, the singles will always be remembered. So I think personally that the, the Who singles were some of the greatest and the most exciting of, of the whole of the 60s, ones that you still want to play now and listen to. And I think you look back now and you realise what the Who did at the time. They were the th third great cornerstone of British rock. Stones, the Beatles and the Who, without those three, rock as we know it wouldn't exist today. And that's probably the, the great reason why they are such an amazing band, because their influence is such that without them, we wouldn't have what we have today.